Uh, Dr. Rose here. Welcome to this next installment of the Dr. Rose podcast show. I want to welcome you all here this evening as we discuss a topic that um, all of the topics I discuss are near and dear to my heart, of course, uh, because I'm just so big on this whole ideal of really making use of our senses. And one of our senses that we tend to just ignore, but it's arguably one of the most important senses that we have is our intuition, right? So when I announced this show, I um, asked around just different folks to just share stories about their own experience with intuition. And I got a lot of feedback um, and we're doing a drawing at the end. I already did the draws for someone who's going to win a Bloom Transformation Center face mask for just sharing their feedback with that. But I wanna invite all of you that are tuning in now to please share this video. Um, please interact, share your stories as well as times that maybe you didn't trust your gut and you wish you did or times that you did and you were so glad that you trusted your gut because everything worked out for you so i want to just share some stories in my book bloom you know which i i i asked courtney i said can i do a a, a shameless plug of my book and then i said no it's a prideful plug that's what it is so <laughs> so i'm going to share just a, a few of my own stories that i shared in the book here a few that i shared in the book and a few more of my own experiences with intuition and um my wonderful beautiful guest here i'm going to pull her in and she's going to just give us all this wonderful feedback on how we can build our intuition share her journey of just building her own intuition and how it has helped her life and how it can help your lives as well so um, in my book, those of you who've read the book, Bloom Seven Steps of Personal Transformation, you know chapter three is all about your senses. It's uh, making sense of your senses. That's the third step of my Seven Steps to Personal Transformation program. And so when we talk about making sense of your senses, you know, we all know about the five senses, the sense of sight. You know, if you see danger ahead of you, you're going to avoid it. You know, our senses are there to protect us. If you hear a baby crying, if you're a mother, you're going to go check on that. You know, if you smell smoke, you're going to investigate or you're going to get out. So our senses, our five senses that we've been taught in school, they are all there to help protect us, to help us better navigate this life we're in. But what about that sixth sense of intuition that's not taught in the schools? Interesting enough, I taught college for 11 years, and that's it's actually a chapter in Psych 101, a portion in the chapter on sensory and perception, where we do talk about intuition. But other than that, this is something that our society overlooks. You know, we hear mother's intuition, but intuition isn't just, you know, um, excluded or just for mothers exclusively, I should say. Um, but intuition is a sense. It's a sense that for many of us, we have allowed to just gain atrophy, like a muscle that we don't use. And as a result, we find ourselves in situations in life that we could have avoided. Um, and we find ourselves repeatedly in situations that we could have avoided if we just learned to build that sense, build that muscle of intuition. Uh, the best way I heard it described to me years ago, there's a few um, descriptions that really brought this whole ideal of intuition home to me. Um, I remember someone saying, imagine yourself, you know, you're on the first floor of a, of a, a high rise apartment, right? And if you're on the first floor of a high rise apartment, you have ground level view, right? You have a view. I recently, before COVID, I was able to move up in my um, facility that I'm in, my apartment, my condominium that I'm in, and what a difference just even a floor or two makes, right? But if you're on this first floor, you have a ground level view, which could be a great view, but it's limited. When, and say you move up, like I did, say you moved up a floor or two, say you move up 10 floors, at that, you not only have a ground level view when you move up, you also can see ahead of you. So if maybe if you're planning on going out to the grocery store and you see that there's a five car accident now that you're higher up, that is typic that's in the path you would typically take and you say, okay, I know I need to avoid that. Um, that's what intuition is. Intuition is like taking yourself at a higher just frequency in life so you're able to see danger before you encounter it and thus avoid danger. Another uh, description that I thought really brought it home to me is someone once shared, imagine if when you were born, someone tied your arm behind your back. And so you went through life, you just thought you had one arm and it was just the norm to you. 
And then 20 years down the line, someone says, hey, did you know you had this arm tied behind your back? And you're like, no. And they untie that arm and just imagine how much more you're able to accomplish in life now that you have two arms instead of one. So that's what intuition is. Once we're able to tap into it, we can navigate life, we can navigate this world in ways that we never imagined to live a healthier, happier life, more productive life, more abundant life. So my guest here this evening is, I call, she's a friend now, I don't just call her a friend, she's a friend now, but it's the wonderful Courtney Kane Sides, and she is a, a spiritual medium. And some of you may say, what is that? I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to let her explain what she is. But I've been knowing Courtney for probably about eight, nine years now, almost 10 years now. And she's helped me gain a lot of insight in different areas in my life. I've referred many, many, many people. <laughs> wow. So, you know, have referred many, many, many people because this woman has a wonderful gift of intuition and she's just able to use that gift, you know, that God-given gift to help so many, to help thousands of others around the country, around the world to just, just again, live better fulfilling lives. So, Courtney, welcome. Hi, Rose. Thank you for having me. Oh. Um, it's, it's, I love at any time that we can connect, of course, in our friendship, but then, of course, with our like-mindedness and yes. this business. Um, uh, I always just really um, enjoy spending this time with you. Well, and I also, I would like to say your openness to, um, yes, to intuition, to uh, the spiritual kind of field. It is definitely something that, like yourself, you're a, you're a yes. doctor, you're a psychologist, you um you are seeing how useful this can be mm -hmm. in others' lives. And I'm seeing so many therapists and psychologists and, and uh, people that do what you do really opening up to this kind of work. And so I just appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you as well and for agreeing to come on. Now, we had already talked about you coming on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I'll do it uh, probably a couple months from now. And yeah. the last two weeks, I've been seeing so many people post things about, you know, I trust in my gut, or, you know, I know it was a spirit telling me not to do that or to do this. And I'm so glad I listened to my first mind. And I said, you know what, I think, you know, the time is right, we need to get her on sooner. So I appreciate you rearranging things and coming on this evening with me. So if you don't mind, tell, tell people about what you do, what your gift is, how it developed. It's well, um, <sighs> I am a spiritual medium. Um, I am an evidential medium. So many things that come through in a session with me is something that you can, um, you know, you can, it's, there's a lot of things that can be um, validated um, on your end. And so there are things that you can go back and say, hmm, you know, you're, you should have a healthy form of skepticism. I believe with anybody who does any type of work like this, you want to make sure that they're definitely in their own process and spiritually, mentally, whatever, they take care of themselves, if that makes sense. Uh, I had a friend who actually, I've known her my whole life. Um, she lives in another state now, and she just had her first session a few weeks ago, and she said, you know, Courtney, um, and she knows I've been doing this work, but she had never had a session herself. And so you can explain it. You can tell, you know, I'm a medium. We connect to loved ones, of course, but then we also connect to your energy. And the way that I describe this is we connect and we see whatever it is that comes through. That can be past, present, future stuff, but this can be, it's all about your energy. You said frequency, you said vibration earlier. And in a session with myself, what I help a client do is we take you from that, we're gonna use your apartment or your condo as that example, just like you did, which is a really beautiful example as of intuitiveness. But what a session does is it takes you from, from your ground floor perspective and it gives you a higher awareness. And so what the sessions do is pretty much, it, you know, we're showing you a mirror. And so in that session, you get to see like, oh, that's right. A good session doesn't tell you something necessarily that you don't really already know to be true. We have that gut instinct inside of ourselves and we have never really been taught to listen. Um, and so I wanna go back to that friend of mine. She did her session. She, you know, loved her session, was amazed, had, have, has already referred many people. 
But she said, how did you know that you had this? How did, when did you figure this out? And I said to her very much of what you just said about the arm thing. And I said, you know, I, you don't ask your friends in grade school if, you know, can you breathe? I can breathe. Can you breathe? It was something that was innate. I could walk in a room and, you and know breathe. things without knowing how I knew them. I could feel somebody's energy and just know what was going on. And that is something I thought everybody could do. But it wasn't until my mother passed that that mediumship um, ability really started to heighten. And after that happened, it really kind of blew up. How old were you at that point? I was 15. I was 15. And I'm telling you, most of you can't have probably had a very similar experience like mine. I had a dream. It was seven days after she passed. She came to me in that dream and she said, hey. And I said, hey. She was in the living room in my dream. And I walked in and I said, but you're, you're dead. You're not supposed to be here. And she said, I'm okay. And she raised her arms and she hugged me. And I woke up and I had that um, the most beautiful sense of knowing that my mom was okay and that void or that darkness or that that emptiness inside of me was filled and I told my Aunt Sharon um, who I looked up to very successful woman beautiful person and a little woo-woo and um, I was it raised a good southern we all, we all have those aunts I think I may be that aunt for some of my uh, I would say we're both those aunts now <laughs> Yeah, I would say that's true. Um, and so, and I've met many of your nieces and nephews, which I love too, by the way. Um, and so she said to me, she said, Courtney, I don't really think that was a dream. She said, I really think your mother came to you. And that hit me. I was like, mm, I think you're crazy is my first yeah. thought. But deep down in my heart, I thought, oh, please God, let that be true. And so at that point, I started writing everything down my experiences I would speak to my mother I would speak to you know God I would speak to my loved ones or I would just write down my call them the premonitions or my hunches and I would date them because I really truly was a skeptic and I was really just wanting to find my own proof because I really didn't have anybody to talk to about it and in time you you, we don't find that we typically discount ourselves when we're truly connected. Yes. We find proof, and that's what—that's how I've really developed it. But I believe we all have this gift. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, what what blocks the gift? Um, when we're younger, I would say let's go back to, and I'm, I do have a child in the home, just in case you all hear anything in the background. There's a child here. Um, I when we're younger. Very often it is a parent shushing it or, you know, I definitely with my own children, I don't give more than what they're emotionally ready for. We don't, I don't inflate, you know, anything like that, but you listen. For me, I find that you listen when you um, hush it or you try to silence their words. I feel like that's how they start to kind of keep to themselves and they don't really express their emotions. Um, and as we get older, the way that we block it is allowing, I would say, stress, life, adulthood, which we all have, to take over. And so we numb it, we drink it away, we um, get in really rocky relationships so that we don't have to feel our stuff, so that we have to feel everybody else's around us. Mm -hmm. And when we are intuitive, we typically, what I find, is that we empathically pick up on the energy of, of everybody around us. And very often it feels better to feel their stuff rather than our own. Mm. So for me to really tap into it, it's about um, doing all the hard work like meditation, mm -hmm. uh, having people in our lives like you, a therapist, a psychologist, mm -hmm. to work through lots of those things. But what you uncover is you uncover, I believe that you uncover all of yourself, if yeah. that makes sense. And this sense is one of those abilities. This is it. Yeah. We've yeah. been talking the last few shows a lot about toxic relationships or yeah. trauma, you know, experiences with trauma. Um, and I, again, want to share everyone to share this video, start a watch party, invite your friends, because yeah. this is some great information that we can use, especially in this cur current climate that we're in, um, in this world. I won't even say in this country, in this world. Uh, tapping into, I, I just believe all of this is happening to just help us, to help shift us um, to a more, uh, like I said, a higher floor. 
uh, yeah. honestly. Um, but there are, we've been talking a lot about trauma and toxic relationships and things of that sort. And these are the things you mentioned, you know, what blocks that. And you say, you know, you find yourself, you know, drinking it away or drugging it away, or you get in relationships, um, anything that does not uh, allow you to be your best self will hamper and dampen your intuition. Yes. Um, but the good news is, is that it, it, you can always, just like if you decide to go on a fitness journey, a physical fitness journey, you can decide to go on this intuitive um, development journey as well and build this intuition. Uh, you mentioned, and I, I know, you know, again, in this climate, especially in the Detroit area, we've had lots of people who have lost loved ones, myself uh, included, you yes. know, during this COVID crisis. And, you know, I'll have clients all the time, you talk about dreams they've had. I'm a big dreamer, you know, my, my loved ones come to me in dreams oftentimes, but they also come to me in instinct and intuition. One of the stories I wanna just share, and I wanna invite you guys watching now, share your stories as well. Any story you've had on intuition, mm -hmm. gut buildings and things of that sort that kind of panned out or you learned and got some insight from that. But I remember, um, and it's interesting when you talk about it was after your mom died because my father passed before my mom. And, you know, although I lost a grandmother, I was close to this, you know, my dad, that was the first person, you know, I was a daddy's girl that I had lost. And I can remember after his passing, I just probably a week or two afterwards, I just started seeing monarch butterflies everywhere, monarch butterflies, monarch butterflies. And I intuitively said to myself, that's dad, you know, just reaching out to me, just letting me know he's okay. I told no one at all, you know, I um, remember going and buying even like at, at Michael's craft store, this little replica of a monarch butterfly. And I put it up like on my light fixture in my dining room. You know, I got a little tattoo of a, a monarch butterfly. Um, but again, never told anyone that this represents my dad. But when I would see it, I would always, you know, say, hi, dad, you know, that type of thing. So about a year after his passing, it was, um, he passed in August of to, uh, 2002 and about a year later I was getting ready to go out of town for Thanksgiving we were going to visit family for a Thanksgiving um, celebration and I mean we were leaving that evening so I was rushing 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 running errands and I was headed home and I passed by the cemetery that my dad is buried in and it was just a pull something said go in you know and I said you know what I'm going to go in and I'm going to just, you know, go and just visit his site for yeah. no reason. It was just impromptu. And this yeah. is November. It's cold. It's windy. The wind is blowing. It's just, you know, uh, a typical November, late November day. And I go in and I go to his site. And as I'm walking up, I notice a white sheet of paper just laying on the ground. And it's just like laying there. Um, and it's like weird because it's windy out, you know, we're out of, at the cemetery grounds. There's no paper. They're <laughs> pretty pristine when you go there. And I walked up and when I picked up the sheet of paper and turned it over, there was a pencil drawing of a butterfly. And for me, like you said, this sense of knowing, I was just like, that's like, that's yeah. all I needed to know. Confirmation. It was confirmation that he was okay. And so many people have stories like this, but we don't want to really recognize the power in that. I, I feel like we are so afraid, or at this point, I'm not, but so many, and I was for many years, but we are so afraid of being ridiculed, whether that's because we know what we were raised in by faith, and we are taught that maybe that's not the route or whatever, but I'm telling you that connection with my mother connection to my father. And when it is of the love, if it's of the light, this is all really beautiful connection. And, and, you know, we can receive signs from our own guides, from God, from, and we know innately when that happens, we all have had those aha moments. And when you walked up and you saw that butterfly, you turned the paper over, that could have been on, um, you know, hundreds yeah. of other yeah. thousands of people, mm -hmm. you know, their marking or their marker, but that was on your father's. And that meant something to you. And so this is, this is what I did when I was 15. I started, I called them the I'm not crazy books, which I think you've probably heard me say that before. Um, and, but they're journals. 
And that's where in that moment, I would have gone back to my book, if I were you, and wrote down, so weird, had this feeling, rushing around, stopped by the cemetery, found this thing, that it had a butterfly, oh, OMG, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And you, you write it down and you leave it alone and you date it. And what I would do is I would take a breath in and say, Dad, I love you. I know you're with me. And, you know, or say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I know you're with me. That's what I say every time. And breathe it off. So you're breathing him in. You're holding him. It feels like a hug on the tightness of your chest. And you're letting him, you're moving along. You're not obsessing necessarily about it. You're receiving and you're being in the rhythm of the light, if that makes sense. And then, but when you, you'll see how often those things happen. And you too will say, oh my gosh, I'm just like Courtney. We are no different than each other. It's just like you said earlier, if you're a bodybuilder, you build the muscle. And if you're, for me, it's meditation. For me, it is clearing out the trauma of your life and healing that, which by the way, is kind of an ever evolving thing of your life. And so just because we do those things for a certain amount of time doesn't need doesn't mean we don't need to revisit them in six more years where other things are popping up. We need to look at that from a different, higher perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant evolution of, I feel, the soul um, healing and that intuitive ability and that connection to our loved ones on the other side and that gut instinct. Yeah. Um, my dad, something that he used to say to me, very analytical guy, uh, owned his own business, really smart, wonderful man. Um, and he didn't talk about it in terms of uh, spiritual abilities necessarily, but he would talk a lot of like gut instinct and a knowing and uh, more so in the fact of safety for his girls. He was a, a, a girl dad is what he was. And so he would, you know, tell me, say, Courtney, when the hair on your arms sticks up, you've got to listen to it. You've got to trust your gut over anything. I don't care if somebody's saying the sky is blue, but if you know it, it, that it's something else, you've got to trust your own gut. And he really helped me come back to my own knowing and really not needing the validation necessarily from anybody else. And I know that that really helped me a lot on this journey to keep coming back to my own experiences and maybe not listening to everything else that everybody was telling me, if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, you mentioned people not wanting to be ridiculed. Um, and I know we've had conversations about that because again, like I've said, I've referred so many people to you and others that I've known even before I met you with similar gifts to just help provide people insight, you know. Um, but it's oftentimes when, when individuals are fearful of it's not acceptable, maybe by their culture, by their religion. Uh, but I was having a conversation with my good friend, uh, Reverend Dr. April Hearn, and she said, you know, in the church, they are called prophets. And yeah. everyone embraces that, you know. Um, and, and, and there are people who have that gift that happen to be, uh, go to your same religious institution, and you don't doubt that at all. However, if they're outside of those four walls of what you consider to be your religious institution, you doubt it. But we all have to remember that we are spiritual beings on this earth. We are spiritual beings having a human existence. So we are far more spiritual. We're electricity. We're energy. That's all we are. You know, we're far more spiritual than we are human. Um, and, and we have to start tapping into that. Had I, so you and I, we've had so many conversations about so many different things and, and I've been lucky enough to be able to even teach and, and, and do sessions even at your beautiful retreats that you've hosted and which is always a beautiful experience. Um, but, you know, I was such a skeptic myself about this. That's why I, I wrote it all down. I didn't really tell many people. My sisters knew and that was really it. And, um, as I was kind of, I would say, coming out of the closet with it, if you, even my website says Courtney Kane for a reason, Kane is my middle name. I, there was a little bit of bashfulness mm -hmm. stepping into it fully. Now it's, you know, Courtney Kane sides, it doesn't matter, whatever. But it, there was an element that I was really, I was nervous. I was nervous about, um, you know, what everybody would think because so many people in our lives see different versions of ourselves. And when we play to those versions and we don't allow ourselves to grow, it keeps us stuck. That, that's another thing that keeps us not stepping into Can you our- say that again? Because I, th I don't want people to miss that. And I think it's very um, important for you to mention that again. Um, the, 
I'm like, let's see how I just phrased it. Um, <laughs> stepping, you know, when we, we're, we're afraid to step into our full potential because we're so worried sometimes about what the neighbor thinks mm -hmm. or the person down the road or the person we went to high school with. Mm -hmm. And um, your family, we, your family, your everything, because they have known different versions of ourselves. Um, a couple of my sisters come to ses do sessions with me, but there are some that, you know, and even friends that that might not be their thing and that's okay. They can still honor that within me. And, but we have to allow ourselves to grow. And if we can't do that and step into ourselves, we're also not a very good example for those around us. Yes. And so when we are able to honor that truth within us, I do feel like it helps elevate, call it the vibration or, you know, the frequency of everybody around us. I will say, um, I'm from a little town that I love. I live here again, um, moved away for almost 10 years. And I do think that doing that really helped me step into uh, my full energy because I, I was able to get away and feel myself in a way and almost move the energy even physically because I was so used to when we're intuitive we we want to feel everybody else's energy and kind of feel like that is something we're really good at um, tuning into somebody else's feelings or emotions and wanting to caretake and so moving away really helped me kind of make more physical boundaries so that I can then make better emotional boundaries meditate all of that there was a time that I spent working for a company, a neurofeedback company. Mm -hmm. And if I had not been working for them, um, before I found that place, I was kept, I was really big into meditation and I love science. I love fact. I like proof. And so I kept telling my husband, um, I, I want to find something with science and meditation, science and meditation, because I kept wanting just to have proof that this, that I wanted something to measure this experience. Mm -hmm. And by working there, you can see different parts within the brain when you're connecting to alpha energy or that intuitive energy and that ability. And if I had not been working there, I don't know that I could have ever fully stepped into this true potential. And science is catching up. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's catching. You know, what I want to I wanna talk a little bit about intuition um, as it relates to animals and, and, yeah. and because... This will help individuals, I think, just more readily accept the intuition they have. Those of you who have pets at home, if you have a pet at home, you know, um, you can relate to this. And also, please share your stories of intuition. Um, and we'll go, we'll have we'll in the time at the end of this to go and check out the comments and things of that sort or answer any questions you guys may have. But there's, there's tons of stories. You guys can Google them. You can go on YouTube. Um, you can look at the research of animals that intuitively knew of natural disasters occurring prior to them occurring. The 2005 tsunamis, um, you guys remember that. And where was, I, I'm sorry, Indonesia? I'm, I apologize. I don't I remember. Was. Yeah, I exactly was. where it was. But um, there, the 2005 tsunami, they were amazed and it, it, it just killed thousands and tens of thousands of people. But they were amazed at the, the, the small percentage or small amount of animals mm -hmm. remains that they found during the cleanup. And they were just like, you know, this is interesting. But townspeople who survived all reported how days prior and hours prior to the tsunami hitting, they would see animals just moving like in droves to higher land because yeah. animals are tuned in. They, you know, animals are, are, are aware. They're in the now. They're in the present. When you talk about meditation, the benefit of meditation being sound meditation, like the gung meditation yeah. here, um, Courtney also, and I didn't find this out until years after we knew each other, she, she has studied and practiced TRE, the trauma yeah. release exercises that I do here too, the brain balancing, the neurooptimal, which is a new service we're offering here. You got the first scoop on that. We'll be launching mm -hmm. that next month. Um, but all of these things are intended to help bring you back to a present state. Uh, uh, you know, a state of just mindfulness and being in the now. When you are present, through, through, through meditation, through trauma release, all of those things that help to keep and bring you to a present state, you are more tuned in to receive the messages you receive. So to avoid an accident, you know, you hear, oh my gosh, there, there are tons of stories of people who on 9-11 woke up and just said, something's telling me not to go today. 
Yes. Uh, or they even got there. There's stories of people got to work and said they just turned around because something just told them to turn around. Just these stories of intuition, we all can tap into it, but it's been suppressed. We, yeah. we've, we've attempted to override it with logic. Um, and you can have both. They aren't mutually exclusive of each other. But if you ever even look at your pets at home, I have a, I call him the fifth child, uh, a little, you know, DLG, because he's pretty conversation with me before. <laughs> yeah. And he is, you know, I, I, when this podcast ends at 8.30 and um, I, I, I guarantee you at 825, he'll be at the door waiting for me because I see it all the time. If, a, if one of the kids calls and says, mom, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be on my way before they've even called, he's gone to that door to sit and wait for them. And I witness this and I observe this because I know it's nothing more than intuition at play. So even when they talk about mother's intuition, I think the reason that's such a, uh, men have fathers and men have intuition and non-mothers have intuition as well but we know the close bond that a mother has when she carries her child. So I, I have to share a story about that as well. If you, and this is in, this is in my book as well, but I, this was 1996 and I had, I had this horrible, 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 like sinus infection, like so much going on. And I had gone to the doctor and he prescribed all these pain meds, all these, you know, um, heavy duty antibiotics for me. I mean, I just felt horrible. And I went to sleep that night. Um, I had my prescription filled, but I had not taken it. I was going to start it the next morning. I went to sleep that night and about four o'clock in the morning, a voice awakened me and said, um, get up and take a pregnancy test. Yeah. I, you know, I'm thinking, okay, this is a weird dream. I turn over, I go back to sleep. 30 minutes later, I'm awakened again by this, just, 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 you know, hearing this thing, get up and take a pregnancy test. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. You know, I'm pulling the covers over my head. Um, not an hour later, the same thing happens. So I get up, I go rumble through the back of my closet, my um, linen closet and, you know, the little junk closet, and I find a test. And I'm, I'm feeling foolish. So, I, you know, I'm taking a test like at five o'clock in the morning and I'm sitting there and I'm looking and it says negative and I just feel like a fool. So, you know, I go back to bed, I get in the bed. About an hour and a half later, it says, go get the test out the garbage. So I'm like, what is this? And I get up and I get the test out the garbage and it's two lines there. Um, and my son, who's now 23 years old, I was pregnant with him. I had not been, I was not late with a period at all. You know, there was no, when I went to the doctor, there was no need for a pregnancy test because I had just, you know, I, I was, I knew it was no chance because it was no, I wasn't late or anything. But I know that if I had started those medications the day that I was starting, just a few hours later from this, this knowing waking me up, that it could have very well had a detrimental impact on, on my unborn child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, I, I welcome this. Like in my life, I welcome the intuition so much, even with my patients. Um, I, it, I have strokes of intuition that comes in when I'm treating them. And it'll say, have you ever thought? And they'll say, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm seeing more and more that that doctor, psychologist, therapists are using that intuition because it again, it's a superpower. It's there for a reason, and again, it's to me, it's you know, you're tapping into uh, that that light, okay? And um, when you say that, it makes me also feel like you know, sometimes we don't listen, and even those are sometimes the things that we also need to write down. So when we don't listen, and we're like, yeah. oh man, I knew it, I felt this, going back and writing that down, and having a place, and so many people don't want to write stuff stuff down anymore. But what I want to tell you is oh, that put it in your phone. People will put it, put in, it in your phone. phone. Put it in your notes exactly. But if you really want to tap into this and not look to others to validate your own um, experiences, your own knowing, that's going to get you further, and it's going to make you actually not have to question yourself. Yes. I still have moments of questions. I like, I love to get other people's opinions, but I'm still ultimately going to do what I'm going to do. Um, and I think too that. When we're in alignment with ourselves, you know, it's our own choice to really listen and embrace that or learn the lesson and not. Yeah. Something yeah. that I find um, is really one, wonderful too is that so many people want to have the answers to it all. And to me, sometimes this intuition, you're blocking it if you're 
if your only want to connect is to know exactly what the outcome's going to be. Mm. You're, you're blocking the, the source and the flow of the information. Sometimes it's just, Say that. Okay, I'm going to have you repeat that again because that's one of my favorite lines I tell people, release attachment to outcome. So can you just say that again? In having such a, a grip on what that outcome is going to mean for you, or and typically it's it's a, a us women who want to know how it's going to end with the male or the whatever or relationship or the career, and we get so fixated on having that thing and it going our way, and we're we are squeezing kind of a life force out of it. Yeah. Even talking about it, I have to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we relinquish that attachment to control it. We're allowing more of that intuition to come in. Uh-huh. What is that? I have to say, yeah, because as you're saying that, again, you know, I've referred people over the years, um, and I know folks who will go and, you know, uh, visit psychics, like, repeatedly looking for what they want to hear, if that makes yeah. sense. And, you know, again, typically around relationships, they'll say, oh, I went to this one this week and that one. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, because what I find is that they know they, yeah. the intuition is there within them, but they don't want it because the outcome is what they know is not the outcome they want. They know you need to be, you, you need to leave this, that joker alone. You need to go the other direction, but you don't want to, you know, receive or accept it. You don't, you don't want to hear trust it. your gut. You don't you want to trust it. your intuition. But yeah. we know. We all know. And we are all guilty, aren't we? Um, yes, we are. <laughs> of doing that, me too. And many, so many this, <laughs> yeah, that's right. But this is the thing is what I find is that oops, I'm dropping stuff. As we're going through those situations too, sometimes we're like stubbing our foot, like, oh, and then we punish ourselves for going down that path again. No, we're we're learning. And what you'll typically find doesn't mean that it's easy, doesn't mean that it doesn't take some tears and and some you know frustration sometimes moving through it but if you can see that this person's teaching you something and that what I find is the next person you're closer and you're closer and you're closer and as you if you're going to sit on your couch and just Netflix it and not evolve you're going to repeat the same patterns intuitively too so if you're say you're if you feel like you're on pause in relationship and but you really want somebody to come into your life if you're doing things like the meditation or going to doing the self-care like your gong baths or you know anything like that that really feels good and for me it's also painting so anything that helps you feel or feels like it helps move your energy that is something that you should be doing and spending time on yeah. that makes sense yeah. and that's actually going to get you more in flow with your own energy that actually helps you be a better partner for when that person is coming into your life but receive when you do go to somebody like myself or you know a spiritual teacher or medium or um, advisor listen hear it and still always come back to what you know to be true um, there is free will and um, I say, write everything down. Again, I date everything. And then we just see where it falls into place. There's no reason to rush or hold on to any of that information. Like, you know, it's the end all be all. No, give it space to breathe and evolve. And it typically does. So meditation, we talked about that, you know, and meditation takes many forms because I want to, I want to just help the, the viewers now to know, and we're not, we don't, we don't want to bombard you with, you got to do all these things because you can do this one thing, you know? So meditation is one of those things, um, definitely. And again, like I said, it takes all forms. It can be the traditional meditation. It can be the sound baths. I, it, when I, and I miss it now, hot yoga for me, I call it moving meditation. That was meditative for me, but people walking, exercise can be meditation. Um, I'm just going to say walking, getting your, you know, when I feel like I've got pent up energy or if I'm, I've had a frustrated, frustrating day, yes, meditation is going to help me, but sometimes we need to ex expend that yeah. energy. Mm -hmm. And so walking, working out, even like you said, the hot yoga is something really, really good to help you. Um, you can develop that intuition too. I, I teach development class um, and I teach it with, I do private sessions with people all around the world that do it through Zoom um, or in person. And I have done group workshops too. And those are honestly, these personal ones are really kind of the most fun for me because so many of these people are so afraid to own it. Yes. And um, I have a couple of people right now that are like 
I'm so proud of them, mm -hmm. um, that they're really seeing that, oh my gosh, the world lights up when you're owning your gifts and abilities, you start to see everything almost in it, deeper color. Yeah. I'm telling you, the world starts to, you see these synchronicities between uh, connections with people. You see the love between people. And if we all step into that intuitive gut knowing, the world is a softer, more loving space to be in. And to me, I believe that that's also what the world needs right now is for us all to step into our true abundant abilities. And that includes the intuitive abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so Courtney, as she mentioned, she came here, um, it was 2018, for a, late 2018 for a gallery reading, and we were supposed to have her back this spring for like a series, a few days worth, um, but of course, you know, the universe had different okay. plans, yeah, and, and we'll have her definitely here when life uh, kind of resumes some type of normalcy, uh, but for anyone, it was sold out. Like there were people like at the last minute, can I just get in? It was standing room only. It was standing room only. And you know, the healing, that's that's the beauty of it. Because again, so often, even though we are taught in church when our loved ones um, go on, they're in a better place. But if people talk like this, they're like, what's wrong with you? But you're you're all, we're always told we're still connected, they're in the spirit realm, you know, there are guys now, but if we really tap into and hold into it, people are looking at you a little strange. So in this gallery reading, there were so many connections made. There were so many tears of joy made. There were, you know, things that people are like, you should not have known that. You, you got up at one point and started dancing when you were doing one of the readings for one young lady because you were like, someone saying you guys used to go out and dance and it was, and she had a picture on her phone that she brought with her on and her they were dancing that night. They were out dancing that night of a cousin, a very good cl cousin, a close cousin that had passed on um, with her. So I know for me, the, having lost both parents, you know, having lost people close to me, I know this knowingness that they're not gone is yeah. what helps my healing process. It helps me get through life. I also know, so this is another way to build your intuition is to allow yourself to connect to those who have passed on. And I know you're, some people may be looking and say, you're a psychiatrist, psychologist, you know, and people say you talk to other folks, you're schizophrenic or whatever, but you know, this is- you, you, There's a difference. Yeah, yeah, there's you have to, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a difference when it's it, when you when you're healing yourself too, and um, there's a difference to the hearing. There's a difference yeah, to the knowing, yeah, and, yeah. And, and you all say that you want to know that somebody is in their, you know, in their own psychological process. You've heard me say this. That's very important to me yeah. too, and and you want to know that the person. Um, we're all human, but that they practice what they preach too. So you oh, want to know that somebody is yes. in the process. But something that helps me is that when I say meditate, yes, meditate. Yes, connect to yourself. It took me a few years to figure out what I thought I knew what calm and quiet was. And you kind of get the visualization in your head and you're going there. But for me, I'm a twin. And so for me, even in the womb, I had somebody else, you know, kicking me, right? Yeah. And for me, it took years and all, all of a sudden, the calm, quiet, the, I had the most peaceful place or space find me. And that was an infant laying on my mother's chest by myself. Mm -hmm. And I rem it just was like, it was as if I saw it as a third party looking in, that sounds crazy. And then I could feel it as the infant looking up at my mother. And that was the first time I really ever felt space, if that makes sense, in my own energy with the creator, my mother, it burnt to me in that moment, right? And um, that just felt, that was a, a huge healing point to me. Um, but back to the meditation. So meditation helps us find that space of quiet, of what our true nature and energy is. And at the tail end of meditation, I say pray before, meditate. And at the very end, visualize your loved one sitting with you. Mm -hmm. And just start from there and see what comes through and maybe you'll shut your eyes and you'll visualize your mom's face and then maybe the next day you feel like or the next moment that you do that your grandpa comes and sits next to you on a bench or just allow your, yourself to drift and but write it down write a date be a skeptic about it but open enough to receive it and see where it falls yeah, yeah. 
yeah. in my in, in in bloom um in that chapter making sense of your senses i have an exercise that i recommend that people do and i call it the five sense exercise mm -hmm. before i talk about intuition but we're talking about the five senses that you know we are all familiar with um yeah. i i encourage people and i encourage my clients to do this because majority of my clients that come in are suffering with anxiety. You know, we know how prevalent anxiety is the number one mental health issue closely followed by depression and they often happen hand in hand. But as I tell people anxiety is because our, we're not in the present. Um, anxiety is when you're future focused. So yeah. it's, uh, I'll be happy when, or it's uh, um, what if I'm not able to pay my mortgage? What if I lose this job? What if I get sick? What if I, you know, lose my parents? You know, anxiety yeah. is all this future focus outside of the present moment thinking. So future focus thinking creates anxiety. Depression is past focus thinking. Mm -hmm. um, if only that hadn't happened to me. You know, things were so much better when. Um, so depression is that past focus thinking. Anxiety is the future focus thinking. Either one, you're not in the moment. So in the book, I help people um, to understand how they can have the power to bring themselves through the moment by just honing into their five senses. So I tell my, my, my clients, my patients, my coaching clients, my Patreon group, when um, we're talking online, I tell people, I say, I want you just tune into your five senses. Take maybe five minutes at the beginning of the day, five minutes at the end of the day to do this. Sit still and mm -hmm. say, what do I see? and hone in on something in your environment that's pleasant. So, you know, I'm looking at, um, a, 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 you know, a, a beautiful plant that someone brought me last year during my open house that I've managed to keep alive, you know? <laughs> and I'm looking at that now and it's beautiful and I can focus on that, like really intently focus on it because when you focus and when you're paying attention to that sense of sight and focusing, you're not in the future, you're not in the past, you're looking at that. I'm looking at how the leaves are spreading out, how it's grown, the, you know, all of that. What are you hearing? So sound, again, the sound meditation. When you come to a sound meditation session here, we're starting back in September, um, more information to come with that. You not only hear, but you feel, that's another sense. So you're getting the, 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 the hearing and you're getting the vibration and the frequency. So people have no choice but to be in a present moment. And we'll have people after that session say, oh my God, I, I felt like I had a trauma release or I've had a problem I've been struggling with for months and I got an answer during this time because for the first time ever, like you said, they find themselves in that space. You know, what do you smell? That's why aromatherapy is so powerful. You know, one of the things that can help your intuition is to fill your home with pleasant scents um, and taste. When we talk about even the, the prevalence of overeating and obesity in our society, Oftentimes, and I tell people, I've spoken on this before, um, overeating is just us wanting to be present. Yeah. So, you know, we, because when we're eating, what are we doing? We're tuning into our senses. We're enjoying the texture, the taste, the temperature. We're enjoying all of that stuff. And it feels good because for the first time in the whole day, we're not in our head. Yes. We're, we're, we're honed in and focused on this food. And that's why when it's all gone, we want more, not because we're hungry, but we want to get back to that state of feeling pleasant. But tuning into your five senses, something as simple as that, you can do that when you're in your car, you can do that at your desk at work. That helps to just create this habit of bringing you into this meditative present state, which can then increase your intuition. Absolutely. And I do feel like that's the start of the building block to bring you back into, you know, it's so funny that you express it in that way to your clients. I do the same in my own way, noticing like when you notice the anxiety, you know, taking the breath and, and I always say just from the tips of your toes and almost feeling yourself pull it from out of the body. And so many of us, it kind of hits right here heavy on our chest. And, and I always kind of feel like we're taking it here and showing gratitude for it. And then because it's there for a reason. It's there to show you that you're not present. So if you turn uh, that anxiety into, uh, if you're showing gratitude for it, it's shifting the energy almost immediately, bringing your, telling you that you don't have to stay in that space of uncomfortability or stress or whatever. Yeah. And so you letting that go and coming back to that present moment is something that I do think that is, what I find is there's so many of us all around the world teaching the same thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so that's, it needs to be taught. 
and I think the world's ready for it now. It's becoming so mainstream. And, you know, you've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this work for 15 years. And I today I don't sound cra so crazy, maybe a little crazy, but, you know, 10 years ago it sounded so much more crazy than what it does today. Yes. And I'm also seeing more men opening up to yeah. it, to their own gifts and abilities. And what I'm finding is that people are becoming more uncomfortable with not owning it, not owning that um, confirmation of their own gut knowing. So when you walk out of the house and you get halfway and you're like, oh, I need to go get that. No, never mind. I'll go get it later. How many of you, and raise your hands or give us hearts or something, tell, uh, tell me if you get to the office or you get down the road and you're like, darn it, I should have gotten that thing. Yeah. Or you needed it later or somebody needed to borrow something. Um, it happens in my life all the time. And there's many times when I grab it and there's many times when I don't because I'm just like, whatever, I'll just get it later. But I always know it's going to come up and it always does. It always does. It always does. And as subtle as that might be, that's your gut. Yeah. 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 You know what has really helped me over the years, um, you know, as someone who has, I've been doing this for 22 years while yeah. raising kids, you know, building a practice, I mean, doing so many different things. And, and I, you know, admittedly for years, it's just in the last five years, honestly, I've allowed myself to slow down. And, 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 and the amazing thing is, since I've allowed myself to slow down, more has come in, more abundance has come in. Because that, oh, I forgot that I can't go back, like you just said, is oftentimes because we're just always such, we're in such a hurry all the time. We're in such a yeah. hurry, such a hurry, such a hurry. Um, and, and we can't be present and intuitive when we are in a rush, you know, when we're rushing all the time. So I've noticed, and I do credit a great deal of that to even being the um, gong sound meditation practitioner now. Even me on those instruments doing it has helped to just bring me my intuition from just being a practitioner and people who come regularly. I know we have some of the regular Darla, we have Darla on here, we have uh, Rochelle on here, some of our regular gong participant, participants. They will tell you, and I know personally because it's happened for me, my intuition has gone off the charts from just being, you know, just in these practices, these consistent practices that helps to just keep me in this present, in the now mindfulness state. It's keeping you in the now while also raising your frequency. And so it means that even more abundance finds us when our frequency is at a different le level or, you know, our energy is rising. So what tends to happen when that's going on too, is that you also find, just like you said, you're slowing down, but more abundance is coming your way without you just doing anything but being present and being you fully within your authentic being. And that that's that's you owning all of your senses and can i say this because you touched on it as well and when that happens and i encourage everyone to start practicing some of the things we talk about you cannot allow yourself to be in the space of people who are contrary to that um be, and they will fall away you know trust me like you your your tolerance for just being in that negative space of of individuals who kind of just want to always be in the midst of, of chaos and yeah. toxicity, that tolerance becomes zero. And yeah. uh, because when you're in the midst of that, you cannot be intuitive. If you yeah. ever walk, so if you find yourself now, because I know in the last several years, I found it personally. If you found yourself like in the presence of people that you used to hang out with, have no problem hanging out with, you know, spend time <laughs> gossiping with, but if you start finding yourself just really seriously uh, uh, when you say trust your gut like getting physically ill or just you can't tolerate it and you just don't feel your best self that's your intuition telling you you know this 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 may have run its course honestly um go ahead we oh. i mean sometimes we stay too long i keep hearing sometimes we stay it's yeah. run its course or we yeah stay too long at the party we stay too long in the relationship we and i'm guilty of that we all are and um and that's going back to uh you know us just really wanting a different outcome but immediately knowing yeah. that it's not what so it staying be. too long at the party in relationships and friendships and jobs in anything blocks your intuition 100 in all cases 
Yeah. Because it can't just happen. And I feel like if you're doing that in one area of your life, you're doing that in all areas of your life. It's not yeah. just a, you know, so many people will come because they have a relationship issue and it's this or whatever. It's not just that. It's, it's an energy issue and it's happening all over your life. I mean, that's typically how it works. So just like we have uh, GPS in our cars, um, I talk about in the Bloom 7 Steps, we have, I call it EPS, Emotional Positioning System. So anytime your emotions, you get a visceral reaction to mm. something that doesn't feel good, that's your intuition telling you go in a different direction. People will get that gut reaction and still go in that direction and it never works out. Uh, but when you have that gut feeling, and let me just say what scientists have now realized, and it's interesting, we call it trust your gut. And this was yeah. where they did all the studies. But scientists now know the majority of your serotonin, that's the chemical, the neurotransmitter that, you know, keeps us happy. That's the neurotransmitter that's typically implicated when people are, you know, depressed or what have you. But 70% of all of our serotonin is actually in our gut. I Not mean, in our that brain. Would make sense. That yeah. would make sense to me too. And especially because in the last, um, in the last two years, I, and I have mentioned this uh, in other Facebook lives or whatever, in other podcasts that um, I started to develop a sensitivity, you know, issue with food and uh, with certain things, dairy, gluten, whatever, the, you know, like many people right now. And it's so irritating. Um, there are times that I still punish myself and eat the gluten, um, but I certainly pay for it. But that's part, I'm telling you, that's part of the awakening too. Yeah. Our, as we, Ray, as we rise in energy, the, you know, what we're bringing to the table has to be as, of a certain level if we're really wanting life to go in that abundant way that we want it to. And that comes with, it comes with that, uh, listening even with the food we're putting in our bodies with all of the energy that we're associating with everything and that's a lot of responsibility yeah 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 so, you know i want and we're, we're wrapping up now but we're going to get and i'm going to scroll through and see if there's any questions or comments that you guys may have but courtney can you tell people how they can get in touch with you yes you can find me of course here on facebook um under my personal page, Courtney Kane Sides, and there's a business page, Courtney Kane Sides. So um, the, the work stuff is my page, so find me there. Um, you can also find me at Courtney Kane, and that's Courtney with no U, so C O R T N E Y K A N E dot com. Um, there's a new website coming, I'm excited. It, we should have had it done in July, but we've had a few little hiccups, but it's coming. I'm hoping within the next couple okay. of weeks it'll be up and fully and beautiful. So We'll be doing lots of fun things and workshops and virtual workshops with intuitive building and uh, just so many different things. So you can, of course, book sessions online or in person or over Zoom or FaceTime, which is how all of your people come to me. By the uh, way. Absolutely. So Courtney's in Oklahoma, everyone. So she's not even local, but it does it. Energy has no bounds, like no boundaries, I should say. <laughs> it's so true. So it has no boundaries. I can't, can you, I don't know if you can on my end here, it's not really, it's saying, saying we have 32 comments, but I'm not able to see. But Rochelle does agree. She says, having slowed down, she's witnessing God's abundance even more. I love that. I see yeah. that. Um, I see Cheryl said something about exactly energy suckers. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I'm looking at, Tamika says, before a storm comes, you'll notice the animals take shelter way before there's even a storm. Cloud in the sky. I'm so sorry. I think my child's seeing That's that okay. Look, she's doing good. She's, she's, she's been patient for an hour. <laughs> she's, she's over it, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, no, I'm not seeing many questions. If you guys have a question, you better hurry and type fast. Or I guess. if you, and, and we're, if for some reason, Facebook isn't showing because it's saying, 32 comments, but I can only see three or four of them. But um, Courtney is available if you if you tag her in a comment or you just go on a comment. We are both going to scroll after this broadcast and we'll answer um, any, any more questions for you. So just to kind of summarize, meditate, whatever meditation works for you, get yes. here, get some sound meditation. We're going to be doing a lot of private groups so you can get your girlfriends together, family together, do some family gong meditation to come in and do that sound meditation. Um, just anything that helps bring you back to a present state, like really honing in. So those who don't like to meditate, because people say, I can't do it because 
Mm -hmm. erroneously people believe you're supposed to shut off your thinking when you meditate that's not you meditating would be dead. you would be dead it, yeah. it's more you about the gap. Shut off thinking you can't that's be, impossible yeah. it's more so about the gap between the thoughts so you have a thought when you first start start to meditate it feels like you're like i gotta pay that bill i gotta go do this i gotta to go do this and so what happens is in time it starts to feel like thought space okay thought and then the, the time between is wider. the it's space wider. becomes more wide and more wide. And that takes time. Yeah. And yeah. the space is where that peace is. The space is where the intuition is, the knowingness. Um, so guys, I, I, please, like if I, the reason I'm doing this show is because I know for myself personally, I know for my clients over the years, I know the benefit just being tapping into your intuitive sense has had on myself and so many others in life. And I don't want you ever thinking that that's something that's out of your realm because one of the things like Courtney says, she does this full time, you know, yeah. this is her full time work now, just helping people using her intuitive gift to help bring insight and healing to others. But one of the things that you can do, you know, is that you can learn to do that for yourself. Yes. You can learn to do that. And it's not, you, I tell people too, I give them tools so they can learn to do it for themselves because I don't want, you don't need to be a lifelong client of no. mine, you know, um, but you can come in every so often to check in. It's just like with you, I yeah. feel that I'm a very intuitive person, but if I want that insight from someone I trust, someone I know is coming from a spiritual realm, you know, yeah. someone um, that whose opinion that I highly value, I'm going to reach out to you to help to just clarify some things I may not be clear with or validate things that, um, that I kind of sense anyway. And it's kind yes. of a validation in that sense. Um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to explore different things and to, again, one of the things I talk about in the book, challenge what you know, challenge what you've been told. You know, don't just take everything you've been told and, and just believe it's just, truth with a capital T. This is the time for all of us to start really reevaluate what works for us. And Courtney, I'll give you the last word. <laughs> You're embracing it all, 100% embracing it all. And I think that that's, as, as much as so many people are struggling during this 2020 time, I really do feel like we're going into that cocoon effect and we're, we're being squeezed at a limit that it's hard to breathe, it's hard to connect with anybody else. And we're getting ready to come through the most beautiful, I'm telling you, awakening in time. And so if you can come through that with all of your senses um, and you owning every thing, all of your abilities, all of your knowing, um, you know, I can't think of a better you that you'd like to come out yeah. with. Really. And a lot your, I know I said you get the last word, but yeah. I, mean, no, you know, I have to say this, I have to say this. and you know, allow yourself to be transparent and vulnerable. When you are, when you are trying to put on this facade of perfection, we've talked about this in other shows for everyone, intuition can't come in when it's this facade of perfection and I can't let anyone know that I've made mistakes or that I'm, you know, I'm faulty. We're all faulty. There's a beauty that comes in to say, you know what, I, there's a little, there, there's been brokenness there, but that's how the light gets in. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And none of us are perfect. And we, I'm the pers first person to, I put it all out there in all so many different ways and a million different radio shows. And yeah, I've yeah. talked about it all. And I think that's where our power comes from. Yeah, yeah. Because people don't typically relate to us when everything's shiny. And that's the way I was raised. Everything's perfect. Everything, your hair has to be perfect. Everything's great. And for me, no, it's got to be know. raw. It's got to be real. And this is what you get. And when that's I, why I love you so much because you're, you're just so real and humble and true and honest and transparent and humble and all of those things. I mean, we, we've laid on sofas and watched movies together, you know, and I don't do that with many people. Trust me. I have, your energy has to be right for me to be able to kind of just be in that present. But you, you know, you're, that's who you are. We do have a question before oh, we, and we'll end it on here. Someone says, how do you know if it's um, intuition or fear? Um, well, and I just saw, hi, Melissa, I see you there. Um, thank you for that question. Um, it's interesting. Sometimes we don't. 
sometimes we uh, sometimes we have in, in time I think we can tell mm -hmm. um, if there's a, high, a hint of excitement but I'm afraid to take the leap because it feels like I'm gonna I'm like jumping this is gonna sound terrible but like leaping to my demise or my you know, death um, sometimes those are the the most rewarding leaps at all, of all, okay? Um, what I find, and I am a very logical person, and so I think that's why I, I don't think I know it's because why I've journaled and written everything down, because I like, I wanna be for sure before I make the move, yeah, yeah. Um, or as close to sure as I can possibly be. And so I have, because I've written those things down, write them in your phone, whatever, wherever you wanna do it, I can tell this a certain depth of where fear lies. If it, if, if it feels like depression, mm -hmm. if it feels overwhelming, it's taking me under, that's fear. Yeah. If it is, I'm afraid of being seen, yeah. do it. Yeah. If, if I'm afraid of growing or taking the leap, mm -hmm. do it. It's, yeah. And even if we fall on our face, you got to do it because yeah. you're growing. Yeah. You're growing. It's moving you closer to something. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you, friend. Thank you. thank you, Rose, for having me. It was so lovely sitting yeah. here with you. And I'm so grateful for the work that you're doing and putting out there. Likewise. Likewise. And I just want to encourage you guys, follow Courtney online. She's on Instagram, Facebook. She has a beautiful website. I know it's been worked on, but you yeah. know, follow her and all those channels. Be sure to share this video. Share your comments. Um, it's on YouTube typically the next day and it's on iTunes podcast. So you can all go back and listen to all the old, uh, podcasts, former bo podcasts cause they never get old, but the yeah. former podcasts that I've had on iTunes and my YouTube channel, um, iTunes is the Dr. Rose, um, podcast show and YouTube is Dr. Rose Moulton. You can find all my videos there. And those of you who are not part of my Patreon group, join my Patreon because there's lots of goodies and exclusive content that you can have there. Um, and just thank you again for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Share the video. And until next time, but before I go, we did uh, just want to let you know the winner of our Tra Bloom Transformation um, Center face mask. And I thought I had one near me, but I don't. But you saw, you saw pictures. It's beautiful. I, I saw it. Yes. It's a, so um, Darla Johnson was the name that we drew earlier. So Darla actually gets a face mask and we'll get it to you. But guys, um, join our Patreon. There's all types of giveaways, exclusive content, and you can go to patreon.com. Um, Bloom with Dr. Rose, and that's you can find more information there or on my website, drrosemolton.com. We'll tell you more information about that as well. So, any other questions you may have, and you're welcome. Um, we have Brandy says, Thank you for this. Amelia says, Thank you. She's oh. going to walk in to meditate in the morning. Darla's excited about her face mask. She's going to represent. You're welcome, Darla. Thank you, everyone that tuned in. Um, share your feedback, share your stories, continue to share your stories of intuition with me. I love to hear these stories. Um, and and um, until next time, and if you want to come on the show, we're all about transparency, being honest, sharing about your journey because it helps others. Reach out to me, message me, um, send me an email, go to my website. You can contact me there, but um, just reach out to me. I would love to have you on as a guest to just share your journey, which in, 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 in turn helps so many others just to come and walk in their truth. So good night, everyone. Good night, Courtney. Till next time. Bye. Love you, my friend. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. I stopped the live stream. Ah! Or Anderson was so bad. Oh no, she's not. Look. Did you hear her crying in the back?